Hey everyone, today I'm helping out on a leak test on a walk-in cooler. So as you can see there, we have a call for cooling. You can see our pressures there are 55 and 250. So we're not low on charge at the moment. We were, I've been asked to assist in a leak test. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna turn off our compressor, okay? And what that's gonna do, it's gonna bump up our suction pressure because we're equalizing the system. Okay, so that's my goal right now. We have a call for cooling. And we jump up on the roof, turn off the power of the condensing unit. All right, so let's go ahead and do a leak test here. There's a ton of oil up here. So apparently uh, they were getting hits up here, but inconsistent ones. So I'm just going to go ahead here and um, perform a leak test. And you can see here the oil. It's all over the place. So the leak is most likely up here. Um, but like I said, the uh, the meter was going crazy. So let's see if we can pinpoint this bad boy. And let's kind of take our time here. So this compressor was replaced, I think, two, three years ago. So let's go just check all the gaskets and stuff like that. I know they've upgraded to... They've gone away from those green gaskets to those new uh, new style ones that if you put them on backwards, they leak. But so far, so good. Vibrosorber is good. Suction line accumulator and filter dryer. Good. Let's just kind of take our time here, see if we get any hits. So we're getting a hit somewhere there, but it's kind of gone away. So I can kind of see the issues they were having in the past. But I think it might be picking up the oil and most likely it is. But let's just go see if we can find anything obvious. Picking up something again. But then it's not. So I think this oil is going to be an issue. But let's just keep leak testing here. Take our time. I don't think there's a leak up here so far. Because when it's getting a hit of it, it's, it's not consistent. So it's almost like when you move the uh, the DTAC too quickly and we're getting something there but then we're not. Again same thing and sorry it's super windy today um, so the audio is not going to be the best here on the roof outside. It is what it is. We're kind of in a wind tunnel here too so it's not helping things. But yeah not having any crazy amount of luck here and then we have a big oil stain here on the front of the condensing unit so maybe that's where our leaks at but let's see if the meter picks up anything and it's it may just be from uh, that oil spill that happened in the unit and now it just pulled through that condenser so let's kind of just focus on this oil stain here but wow no hits so that's kind of a false alarm there um, this oil stain's definitely kind of throwing us in the wrong direction. I'm not saying there's not a leak up here, but I don't see anything yet. We're definitely going to clean this oil stain just so the next tech's not all confused. Um, and then we'll redo a leak test after we, we kind of uh, degrease this guy. But let's just keep chasing here. And still getting nothing. Headmaster, nothing, no hits. So weird stuff going on here. I don't think we have a leak up here, but like I said, I want to spray this thing down and degrease it. Um, I'm going to head downstairs and I'm going to hit up the evaporator coil. All right, we're back down in the box here. So we'll still have a call for cooling. And let's go hit up our coil here. Evaporator coil, I've taken off the side panels. Let's see if we get any hits here. Let me just climb up here, get a bit more comfortable. Let's see if we can jam the camera here. We got the rack on the side, but we'll figure it out. So let's go hit up our usual suspects, all the U-bends here. Uh, this coil's probably over 15 years old, so uh, potentially um, we could have a leak here on the U-bends. Like I said, I don't think the leak is on the roof but we're going to get that whole thing cleaned up and then we're going to go test it again 
but in the meantime let's let's do this while the uh, degreasers soaking up there and so far not really getting any hits here and let's head over to our left hand side of our coil and just um, and we'll start hitting up our U-bends okay I just want to show we do have a call for cooling here the solenoid is open okay so that means our pressure is probably around when we checked on the roof it was above 80 psi that should be plenty to find a leak in this coil probably should have done that first but that's okay nothing wrong with double checking so let's see here let's go hit up our U-bends so far, so good. And let's just carry on here. Let's go hit up our solenoid. And getting a hit here on the TXV. All right, we got something. So one of these flare nuts are most likely leaking or the power head. And it's really picking up on this side. So let's see if we can dial in the meter here. And let's get some soap on her. And let's see if we can kind of zoom in and see this leak. And seeing a really small bubble. There we go. You can see it. That's probably right around 10 o'clock. Let me try to get a better camera angle here. Sorry, I got really shaky hands. I can't help that. Let's shoot this up one more time. Now I got the light on there at least. At least we can show it to the customer. Say, hey, this is where your leak's at. And let's shoot her up. And you can kind of see, there we go. Now you can see it. Leak is right there. You can see the bubbles coming out. There we go. We got a good picture finally. All right. So our leak's going to be there. So our game plan is going to be to take this flare nut off uh, and slap some nylog on there. Uh, but first things first, we got to pump down the system. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So let's just really quickly go over how our pump down solenoid works and the benefits of having it. Uh, for isolating the low side so if I close this solenoid right here okay this pump down solenoid that means refrigerant is going to stop here it cannot go past this point right here okay so that means everything in here is going to get pumped down into the compressor okay everything's going to be here now there's a valve here I'm going to close this valve okay once I close this valve this entire section of piping and the evaporator will have no refrigerant in it. Okay, so that means I can park everything in the receiver slash condenser. Okay, and I can do a repair here on everything that's in the blue section. Okay, so in our case, we're going to um, repair this flare right here on the TXV. So uh, once we pump down, we can do that. Now, there's a certain way to leave it in a positive pressure. So if I pump down to let's say seven PSI and just say I can get this flare nut off quick enough where it doesn't go into a negative pressure, technically you're not bringing non-condensables into the system. But in this case, uh, I'm gonna pump down completely and, and uh, just let the refrigerant uh, just come out that whatever's gonna be left in there, the two, three PSI, which is like, I don't even know, a couple ounces if that, so that I can put on the nylog correctly. Okay, and, I, and plus I wanna do just a good nitrogen test on this. So uh, the importance of this solenoid is we can now take all the refrigerant out of these lines and remember you must valve off here, especially when we're gonna be doing a nitrogen test. All right, so we're gonna pump down. How we do that is we're gonna close this solenoid. How do you close the solenoid? Very easy, just kill power to it. So you're going to see now we have no longer have any power and we're back on the roof here we have 93 psi in our suction line obviously we can't do the repair with that so we're going to turn our condensing unit back on 
she's going to pump down and once it pumps down that's when we're going to close this suction valve on the compressor okay don't close it before that okay then the comp then the refrigerant can't get over to the receiver okay and how we're going to close the valve is we're going to fully front seat it so we're going to wait till our pump down occurs and it's our low pressure switch here which is this one I can't change uh, so it's probably set to like 5 or 10 psi somewhere in there so whenever it gets to that and the condenser unit shuts off we're gonna close this valve and we're gonna front seat it all right there we go it's off let's quickly front seat this bad boy and we're almost there And we are completely front seated now. So you can still see we have five PSI in the line. So like I said, if you work quick, you can actually fix this flare. Uh, I'm not interested in working quick on this one. I want to nylog it really good. All right, I'm just gonna quickly uh, clean all this oil because I'm gonna do a leak test. And um, I wanna do that before I fix this TXV. So you can kind of see the end or finished product here. Everything's looking really good. Uh, the next technician's not going to be confused for sure on whether there's a leak. So here we go. We got our TXV right here, ready to put some nylog on her. All right, so I'm just going to hit fast forward here, just not to bore everyone to death. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to hit the threads, and then I like to hit up underneath the flare there. Like I said, we probably could have hustled this and done it under positive pressure, but I don't know. There's a lot of refrigerant in this system. I don't want to be going back and forth on this. I want to be sure. Uh, it's a critical system. I probably got 15 pounds of refrigerant in it. So let's just be sure and, you know, spend the extra. If this takes an extra 45 minutes, so be it. That's fine. All right, so you can see here, I still have uh, the refrigerant from my gauges from the roof. So all I'm going to do is push my refrigerant from the high side hose into the low side and I'm going to bring that into the system so we actually are just not even adding refrigerant at this point. It's just whatever was left in my gauges and we'll let this equalize or get us maybe not equalize but yeah okay so we got 12 psi in there which is fine. So now we're going to pump in some nitrogen and let's just do a pretty thorough test here. Make sure that nylog's doing its job. Bring this in nice and slowly. And probably get up to around, I don't know, 100 PSI, somewhere there. We don't gotta go too crazy. Uh, we are on the low side here. All right, so we did make it to about, whatever it is there, 89.990 PSI. Gonna be good enough for the leak test we're trying to perform. So let's go ahead and just kinda take our time here. Make sure we get no hits. Like I said, critical equipment, 15 pounds of refrigerant, and with the price of refrigerant going up, let's just be thorough. All right, let's go ahead and soap her up and see if we get any bubbles. And looks like we are good here. Our relief detector would have went off crazy anyways if we weren't. So I'm good with that. All right, so... Um, we're just doing our standing nitrogen test. 89.9 hasn't moved. So we're all good here. All right, for a quick vacuum in this little section of piping, we're all good. Now we're gonna get a call for cooling. And that's gonna allow refrigerant now to flow through. We're gonna open up our solenoid. And you can see here we have a call on the solenoid. So our suction line now will have refrigerant. Now let's hop up back on the roof here and I just want to do a quick leak test here. Now that we got all the oil off, everything's looking clean again. Uh, the next tap is not really going to struggle thinking there may be a leak there. And as you can see, we're all good here. I'm happy with this. No leaks on the roof. Alright, so now the next thing we want to do is we want to open this uh, suction line valve. And then now our whole system's gonna be open because if we 
we close it here obviously the compressor is not going to be able to pump through to the high side there so let's crank open this valve we're going to fully backseat it and you can see our pressure is going it's starting to uh, equalize there and it's coming up nice and slowly so let's get this thing fully backseated All right, all good here now. We're fully back seated. Let's go fire up our condensing unit. And then you're going to see our pressure, our suction pressure is going to pull down. Head pressure is going to go up. Let's check our cyclox, make sure our charge is good. You know, we potentially took out an ounce there, but nothing major. We're good. Cyclox is clear. Ambient temperature is around 79. So let's go ahead and check our pressures here. So, uh, head pressure is still coming up, so let's just give that a minute to do its thing. And uh, it's kind of funny because the wind's coming through here, so it's going to affect our head pressure slightly. Nothing too insane, but we do got to pay attention to that. So we may not get exactly what we want, but you know we want to be in the ballpark. This is going to be a 30 condenser split, so I'm looking for somewhere around... 109 condenser saturation temperature so yeah now we're coming down to 78 so somewhere around 108 we're getting around 103 and it's going to slowly start coming up more and more and then our suction pressure is 76 which seems pretty low uh because our box temp is probably around i don't know it's probably 50 to 60 right now so something's going on there with the suction pressure and we are not low on charge, so we probably need a TXV adjustment. Um, so now we're down to 77, 78. So yeah, we probably need a TX valve adjustment. So let's hop down and go do that. All right, so as you can see, the saturation temperature is 24, okay? The box temp is 41. Those should be a little bit closer. They should be within like, let's say 12 degrees, somewhere there. So you can see our superheat is 15, okay? So what does that mean? It means we want this temperature to come up. To find our suction pressure, we just take our current box temp. And then we're going to subtract our superheat, which is 10 Fahrenheit. So this is ballpark. So our current box temp is 41 Fahrenheit. And then we subtract 10 Fahrenheit. And that gives us around 31 Fahrenheit. Okay, right now we are getting 24 Fahrenheit saturation temperature. All right, so let's just slide over to our refrigeration temperature chart so we're going to take the temperature of the refrigerant inside the the piping and then we're going to take the temperature of the copper okay so just say the air temperature is 41 okay that means the copper is probably two degrees lower so the copper is probably around 39 fahrenheit so this is what i used to just roughly calculate superheat i'm obviously going to put a clamp on so that's when i say 10 fahrenheit is kind of the ballpark because that's the evap td but really it becomes 12, okay? Because the air we're testing the air temp, not the copper temp, and that's what we need to test. The copper is always gonna be about two degrees less. So if we go back over to our PT chart here, so in reality, okay, in reality, we're gonna subtract 12 from here, and that's gonna give us 29, and that's the target we're looking for, 29 Fahrenheit. Right now we're only getting 24 Fahrenheit, okay? So that means, we want the saturation temperature to go up, so that means we're going to open the valve until we get around 29 Fahrenheit saturation. All right, so let's go ahead here and we're going to open up our valves. Uh, I usually go quarter turns is what I like to do, and I usually like to do about four quarter turns. So you can see there I open the valve and you're gonna see our superheat's gonna start to drop. See how it's coming down nicely? But what's happening is our saturation temperature is going up. See how we're at 26.5 already? So remember, we're kind of looking for 29. So if we take 40 Fahrenheit box temperature and we subtract 12 from it, that gives us about 28. So we're kind of targeting 28. But obviously, we have the clamp on there. So, you know, it's, that's going to do all the calculating for us. And we're down to 11 superheat. 36 degrees in the box 
and you can see there we're at 23 24 uh, saturation temperature so that's really good okay I'm just gonna open up the valve just one more turn here let's see if we can get this thing down a little bit lower and this should bump it up and it should bring our superheat closer to 10 but more importantly we are looking at um, the saturation temperature so let's just give this a couple seconds here uh, in theory you're supposed to only adjust it every 10 minutes I find you don't have to wait that long um, but let's let's let it come down nice and slowly let's see how close we can get to 10 this box was struggling getting below 40 okay now it's pulling down really quickly okay so we had really lo long run times this is gonna help everything out and you can see there we have 10 superheat box temp is 36 all right so we're stabilized there at 10 superheat I'm content with that uh, this thing's pulling down really good now we were stalling out at 40 you can see there saturations 23 and last but not least let's do our final temperature check 36 Fahrenheit cycle off we're all good